Okay, the first thing we got to do with the uh, stator before we put the spacers on is make the bias supply connection. And the bias supply is going to be connected to the stator with, a, with this green wire here, which is a 20 gauge wire, stranded wire. You can see I've, I've tied a knot in the wire. Got a 332nd drill bit and I drilled a little hole through the stator from this edge. And then from the other side, I took a 316th drill bit and put a little counter bore right here for the knot to sit in. We're gonna just slide our wire through here. And the knot's gonna slide right down in this little pocket here. And this makes it virtually impossible to pull that wire loose without breaking it. I'm gonna solder this wire to the copper foil charge ring and uh, so I've stripped the insulation off the edge of the wire and I've kind of splayed the wire strands out a little bit to make a really flat connection. This is my roll of copper foil tape. I'm gonna put a little spot of red, spot of uh, solder on the edge of the foil tape. I'll set my little wire up here. You can take a little jeweler's file and uh, kind of knock it down a little bit, get all the uh, any excess uh, solder to stick it up. Makes it very nice. So, this is my connection between the wire and the copper foil charge ring. So, I got some 1 16th thick 3M polyurethane double sided mounting tape and this is going to serve as the spacer it's going to uh, stand the stator a sixteenth of an inch away from the diaphragm I'm going to go around the edge with the install the spacers okay now it's time to install the copper foil charge ring so I have my wire here with my copper foil attached. I'm gonna feed my wire down through this little hole. Pull the knot through there, pull the knot tight against the knot. Okay, there's my connection. Now I just need to run this charge ring all the way around the stator. Okay, now the copper foil charge ring is installed. The charge ring goes all the way around the periphery of the stator and it conducts the biasing voltage onto the diaphragm on the opposite stator when they're mated together. And uh, the way that we did this uh, makes a very solid electrical connection because it's soldered. Also, it's, it's a very solid mechanical connection so that wire is no danger of that wire pulling out now. And that's happened in the past, and that's why I came up with this technique to make sure it doesn't happen again. Today I'm going to tension the diaphragm and install the diaphragm onto the stator. And you're looking at my diaphragm tensioning jig. This jig is one inch larger all the way around than the stator. And it's made of MDF and uh, the edges are radiused very smooth because we're going to be stretching we're going to be tensioning that diaphragm material over the edge and we have to have a smooth edge so as not to snag that fragile film and tear it this is six micron polyester film and the trade name is mile rc and that's what our, that's our diaphragm material i cover it with blue painters tape and then i apply a car wax to the plate tape painter's tape to make this tape as slick as possible so it won't snag the film when we're stretching the film. Now this is a bike tube pneumatic jig. And around the edge of the jig, there is a bicycle tube stretched around this jig. We have to use a, a tube with a Schrader valve, not a Presta valve. Most of these skinny bike tubes like this use a Presta valve, but in this case we want to use a Schrader valve 
and uh, it's a little hard to find this uh, type of uh, thin thin tube with a Schrader valve. I bought this at Walmart, so that's where I'd start first. Okay, uh, we have the jig laid out over the Mylar diaphragm material, and uh, we're going to soft blank it so we don't snag anything. And uh, we got the double back tape ready to go around the edge, and I'm just going to pull the Mylar around the edge and tack it down to the double back tape. We want to get all the we want to get all the uh, slack out of it to the extent possible. So snug it up. I'm going to do the two ends first. Then come back and get the sides. So I pre-cut some little strips of uh, clear packing tape here and um, I'm going to grab these edges and pull down and really try to secure these edges very well because I got a lot of film packed up in the corner and the tape can't grab all of it. The double back tape can't grab it all so I'm going to add a little extra here. While we've got it inverted, I'm going to go ahead and hook up my bike pump. I'm going to have to hang this over the edge of the table so that my bike pump is going to hang down here. Okay. We're ready to start stretching. So I've got my bicycle pump hooked up and I'm going to start putting some uh, air pressure in the tube. So the trick is to get the elongation before you actually break the diaphragm. So I'm going to go a little bit bigger and I'm going to take my pump off all right I got it stretched I'm a little bit oversized I'm going to let air out of the tube until I get back to my reference mark I think that's on the money so, diaphragm is tensioned, ready to put the a stator on the diaphragm. Now I've got my stator ready to go. Got the backing off the double back tape spacers. So as soon as I set this thing down on the mylar, it's gonna bond it. So I have to make very sure I'm in exactly the right location before I drop it. I'm looking good down on this end. Looking okay here. So, now I'm gonna start applying pressure around the edges and that double back foam tape is sticking itself to the diaphragm. So I'm gonna go all the way around the diaphragm and put a lot of pressure. Okay, the mylar is stuck. Now I can let the tension off the diaphragm.
Have the diaphragm with a little razor knife. I'm going to go around the edges and release and trim the diaphragm away from the stator. Okay. Okay, we have two panels here with the diaphragms installed. I'm going to wipe it down with denatured alcohol because that Lycron crystal doesn't like any kind of fingerprints, anything. It'll, it'll run away from the slightest little greasy point or fingerprint. So. Cleaned or ready to spray the Lycron Crystal ESD coating. You want to make sure that you've got the nozzle pointed towards the dot. Okay, that's it. Okay, so uh, we're ready to assemble the panel now. And um, I've got, um, I'm gonna do this with a, two vertical stops. I got a stop here and a vertical bank. So the first thing I'm gonna do is leave the backing on the tape, stick the two panels together, and get a little flashlight, make sure the wires are lined up, make sure everything lines up. And if you need to put, you know, do some adjustments, you can put some little shims to get the wire heights right, get the wires lined up to where they match each other. This looks pretty good. So we're ready to roll. Now I can take my tape off. Got all the tape off everywhere. My bank points, edge and bottom. I'll bump the stator together. Okay, it's basically tacked together right now. Pliers here, I'm going to put a little squeeze. Okay. So here's that uh, stator we just finished, and looking pretty nice. Looking pretty nice. Still got a bunch of wiring to do on this speaker to get the resistor network hooked up. Got the power supply ready to go. Just need to get the panel done and get the woofers in it and we'll be good to go.